I was in the middle of preparing to attend the funeral of my beloved mother-in-law who had just passed away. Then all of a sudden, my phone rings. Don't you dare come to the funeral. Go back to your parents' house in the countryside right away. What? Confused but obedient, I immediately headed home to the rural Midwest where I was from. Later, I found out from my husband about the existence of his estranged, despicable sister, Jessica. So mom's dead, huh? How much of the inheritance do I get? The audacity of her trying to profit from my mother-in-law's inheritance. Unforgivable. I decided then and there to protect my mother-in-law's honor and fight against this vile sister-in-law. In the end, after a fierce war of words, my sister-in-law ended up in a dark, cold cell. My name is Kristen, a typical housewife. I'm married to Charles, a company employee, and we lead a blissfully happy life together. I've heard that many women struggle with their relationships with their husband's family after marriage, especially between a daughter-in-law and her mother-in-law, where there are often rumors of covert and brutal conflicts. I, too, had such a gloomy perception. However, fortunately, I've been able to lead a worry-free marital life in that regard. Yes, I had a great relationship with my husband's mother, Charlotte, for instance. Kristen, what do you think of this cardigan? I knitted it thinking it might suit you. For me? Thank you. It's adorable. And your knitting is really impressive. I'm glad you like it. The wind is getting chilly, so be careful not to catch a cold. Absolutely. Hey, if it's alright with you, could you teach me how to knit sometime? It was just like that. Charlotte's smile was always filled with warmth and kindness. I owed her so much, she had even helped us financially at times. I loved my gentle mother-in-law and considered her like a second mother. But then, Kristen, mom passed away in the hospital. I received the news of Charlotte's death just the other day. I was shocked by her passing, and for a while, I could hardly eat anything. But I guess that's reality, and I have to accept it. Come to think of it, Charlotte had been diagnosed with terminal cancer a few years ago and had been undergoing chemotherapy treatments ever since. It must have been a really tough fight. Whenever I visited her, Charlotte always greeted me with a smile. Surely, she was doing her best not to worry us. I couldn't stand around just crying for her. I decided to send her off with a smile. With that in mind, I was getting ready to attend my mother-in-law's funeral, which was to be held at my husband's family home. Then, all of a sudden... My cell phone, sitting on the table, started ringing. Curiously, I checked my phone and saw my husband's family's number displayed on the screen. My husband had gone ahead to prepare for the ceremony. Maybe he'd forgotten something. I casually picked up the phone and put it to my ear. However, Kristen, don't come to the funeral. Go back to your parents' house in the countryside right away. My husband's frantic voice echoed from the phone. Wait, what? You want me to go back to my parents' house? Why are you in such a panic? Sorry, we had a bit of a problem at the venue. I'll explain everything once we meet up. Naturally, I was confused by my husband's words. What on earth was he talking about when he said problem? And I'd never seen him so flustered before. All right, calm down. For now, I'll do as you said and head to my parents' house. Take a cab. I'll be right there. Bye. With that, he hung up. Truth be told, my mind was filled with question marks. But if Charles said so, there must have been a good reason. So I changed my plans to go from my husband's family home to my parents' house under a significant pressure. Kristen, what's going on? Today's Charlotte's funeral, isn't it? Well, come in first. We'll talk inside. When I explained the situation, they were just as puzzled as I was a moment ago. However, without my husband's arrival, there was no way to elaborate. We nervously waited for my husband to arrive. About an hour later, my husband burst into the house. Kristen, are you okay? I'm fine, but what happened to your hand? Looking, I saw that my husband's hand was wrapped in a bandage. My husband touched his injured hand, making a terribly difficult expression. Next, he started to explain what happened at his parents' house and the whole circumstances surrounding it. Actually... Apparently, my husband has a sister three years older than him named Jessica. But this Jessica was a very undutiful daughter, causing troubles for the family from a young age. It turns out she's had more run-ins with the police than one could count. 
His mother Charlotte never gave up on such a daughter and always kept apologizing to people around them. And she even took responsibility for the debt that Jessica created. I'll definitely pay it back, okay? Please, mom. She believed her daughter's words, but Jessica betrayed that promise and left home. Jessica was cut off from my husband's family and it has been a no contact situation until today. And then Jessica showed up at his parents' house on the day of her mother's funeral. After so much time, one might think she would have grown a bit. However, the words that came out of Jessica's mouth were, so mom's dead, right? How much of the inheritance can I get? Of course, my husband was furious with her attitude. Was that the first thing to say after their mother's death? He went on to angrily tell his sister that she was disinherited a long time ago. And also, to Charlotte, her daughter was no longer Jessica, but Kristen. In other words, me. What? Kristen? Who's that woman? It's ridiculous if she can inherit and the real daughter can't. Upon hearing the truth, Jessica became enraged, her face turning red. Then, she snatched my husband's phone and stormed out of the house in her car, hurling hostile words towards us. Apparently, the injury to my husband's hand was from her biting him at that time. I remotely locked the phone right away, but it seemed she might have found out our house location and Kristen's face from the contact list and photos. Oh my, I can't believe my ears! I was speechless for a moment after hearing my husband's words. I was surprised to learn for the first time that Charlotte had a daughter, and it was even more shocking that she was such a terrible person. I'm sorry for hiding about my sister, it's my family issue, but now... My husband apologized with a pained expression. We were thinking of how to deal with the situation, trying to cheer up my distressed husband. Well, we should probably stay away from our city home for a while, just in case, he said. Is our rural home address safe? Yes, I didn't store that information on my phone. So for precautionary reasons, we decided to stay at our rural home. And then, as the new day dawned, the sun rose and the chirping of the birds filled the air. I'm off to work. If anything comes up, give me a ring on my spare phone. Okay, have a good day. I watched my husband drive off to work, a smile on my face. But inside, I was a whirlwind of anxiety. What if my sister-in-law showed up? What if she attacked me? These worries tormented me constantly. Whenever I closed my eyes, I saw Jessica's raging face at my husband's family home. But to my surprise, life at our rural home was peaceful. Day after day passed without incident, and time flowed tranquilly. The anxieties and tension that had bothered me were gradually subsiding, now barely a flicker. If only this issue with my sister-in-law could simply disappear. I started to think optimistically. That's when the situation changed. Excuse me, is the couple Charles and Kristen at home? That day, a police officer from the local precinct came to our house. Um, what's this about? I hesitantly asked, filled with a dreadful premonition. And it turned out to be spot on. Apparently, our city home had been burglarized. The police had just received a call from the scene. I contacted my husband to tell him what happened, and we rushed back to our home together. And when we arrived, sure enough, the house had been ransacked. Every drawer was open, as if a storm had swept through. Is there anything missing? The officer asked. Well, let's see. Urged on, we checked the inside of our house, under the supervision of a police officer. Our bank books and other valuables seem safe, for now. However, a few hundred dollars that should have been in our dresser were gone. By the way, according to a neighborhood investigation, a suspicious woman had been spotted around here several times over the past few days. This woman was reportedly shouting in front of our house, yelling things like, Come out! And, Pay me back! Charles, could that be? I'm pretty sure. I'd bet 90% sure that it's Jessica. My husband nodded while looking at me. We explained the recent issue with my sister-in-law to the police. The matter of the disrupted funeral, the stolen smartphone, and my husband's injured hand? The police responded rather smoothly. It was probably because we had previously reported the smartphone incident to them. Afterward, we had to give a more detailed account at the police station and didn't get back to our rural home until it started to get dark. 
The burglar was caught soon afterward. As expected, the culprit was Jessica, my sister-in-law. According to the police, she was audacious enough to stay in a hotel near the crime scene after the burglary. She was supposedly taken into custody while nonchalantly receiving a massage from room service. Of course, she paid for all of this with the money she stole from our house. Even though she admitted to the crime, she was denying the burglary. Although I didn't understand the details, it seemed that when the crime involved family, things weren't so straightforward. Anyway, we were called back to the police station again. Guided by the officer in charge, we were led into the room, and there sat a brunette woman, sulking in her chair. Suddenly, she blurted out indignantly, Charles, how could you do something like this to your own family? It's unbelievable. Jessica showed no remorse at all. In fact, she didn't even seem to think she had done anything wrong. She probably acted like this during the police interrogation too. According to her, she didn't enter the house with the intent to burglarize it. She claimed she had come to discuss inheritance matters, but since we were always away, she had no choice but to break the window and enter. Even the money she stole was only necessary for her to stay in a nearby location, so she said. In other words, it was all our fault. What a short-sighted and selfish way of thinking. To think that such a dangerous person harbored resentment against me. If I had bumped into her while I was alone, who knows what could have happened. The thought alone made me shudder. Meanwhile, my husband Charles and my sister-in-law were engaged in a heated argument. You've got some nerve showing up after all these years and pretending to be a part of the family. Give me back my phone, will ya? Fine, fine, I'll give it back. You locked it right away so I couldn't even use it properly. Just like you, huh? Besides, family is family, isn't it? Both mom and I cut ties with you a long time ago. That means you have no business with her inheritance. Oh, about that. Leaving all her money to a stranger's daughter instead of her own. Was the old hag out of her mind or what? Please, stop saying such disgraceful things. Before I knew it, I found myself shouting. I couldn't stand her disrespecting Charlotte. But Jessica shot back, glaring at me and sounding quite annoyed. You're that Kristen woman, right? The one who stole the inheritance that was supposed to be mine. No, I didn't steal anything. I mean, what do you mean? With that, Jessica started bearing down on me. I hate to admit it, but her intense stare had me frightened. I lost the words I was about to say. Jessica seemed to see right through me, snorted, and began to laugh, looking as if she had just won a victory. At that moment, the police officer sitting with us coughed lightly and stepped in. Let's all calm down, folks. It seems there's a lot going on, so why don't you have a family discussion first? He must have decided it was a family matter from our exchange. We can discuss the matter of the charges and everything else later he said, bringing the situation under control. Later on, we set up a formal discussion at our in-laws' home. In a living room covered with carpets, Charlotte's relatives gathered around a large table. In the midst of this tense atmosphere, it was Jessica who spoke first. If you give me my share of the inheritance, I'll let all the past rudeness slide. You should be grateful to generous me. Jessica was still as arrogant as ever. Well, it was to be expected. There was no way someone who hadn't changed in over a decade would change in just a few days. Every time she opened her mouth, she kept insisting, Give me the inheritance! Drop the charges! Of course, we had no intention of meeting her demands. We've said it over and over. You were disinherited, so you can't receive any of mom's inheritance. Well then, why don't you guys give me some money after you receive the inheritance? There's no way that absurd idea is going to fly, my husband said, visibly frustrated. I calmed my husband and then turned to her, doing my best to remain level-headed. Jessica, did you read all of Charlotte's will? There was a section about you too. I'm only interested in the part about the inheritance. The rest is probably just her grievances against me. No, Charlotte was concerned about you. She was filled with regret. Well then, she should have given me the inheritance, even more so. With that, Jessica scoffed in annoyance. My blood was boiling, yet I felt overwhelmingly sad. 
She saw her own mother, Charlotte, as nothing more than a convenient tool. Charlotte didn't give you any money because she knew she couldn't change you with it. I said without waiting for her response. I can't let a despicable person like you have even a cent of Charlotte's money. You're telling me you've got some nerve, considering you're not even blood related. I don't want to hear that from someone who dismissed their own blood ties. Facing my words, Jessica faltered for a moment. Then her eyes narrowed sharply, glaring at me. It's an ugly, terrifying look. But this time, I couldn't look away. There's nothing more to discuss. Please, leave now. I said, locking eyes with the intimidating Jessica. Suddenly, Jessica lunged across the table at me, either out of rage or fear. But she was immediately restrained by my husband and other family members present. Ten minutes later, she was forcefully escorted out by the police who arrived at the scene. All the while, she continued spouting off insults, but by the time she was put into the patrol car, she had completely lost her spirit, slumping her shoulders. Afterwards, I heard Jessica ended up in prison. Our report of the incident had been officially accepted. Apparently, Jessica had a large amount of debt from loan sharks. It seemed that her obsession with Charlotte's inheritance was due to this hidden circumstance. Regardless, she is expected to lead a miserable life, never to see the light of day again. She just doesn't understand a parent's love. She made her bed, now she has to lie in it. We were reflecting on the recent events in our home, which was finally neat and tidy again after a long time. As my husband offered incense in front of my mother-in-law's portrait, he said, I was surprised, Kristen, to see you argue so bravely. Well, that's because I read mother-in-law's will again. The truth is, I had read my mother-in-law's will again the day before talking with my sister-in-law. I hadn't really had the time to thoroughly go through it before. The will was filled with Charlotte's passionate feelings, almost like a letter. Every word she had written stirred me up. Charlotte had always been concerned about her child. Without leaving a single grudge, she worried about her well-being, and she bravely departed for heaven, hoping for our happiness as a couple. She would have wanted to do many things for her real daughter. As I held my cardigan tight, I started to tear up thinking about my mother-in-law. Seeing me like that, my husband tried to cheer me up. Kristen, would you knit something for me too? Sure, I'll show you mother-in-law's knitting technique, I said, wiping the tears from the corner of my eyes with a smile. We'll make good use of her inheritance. From then on, I vowed in my heart to live a happy life for Charlotte's sake as well. We'll fire anyone who can't meet their quotas. The younger section chief, eager to reprimand me as I desperately bowed my head, unable to meet this month's quota. I understand. I'll resign. Pushed to the edge, both mentally and physically, I decided to leave the company. Oh my, really quitting. It'll be tough for an old man like you to lose your job, you know. The section chief scoffed at me. The day after I quit the company, I received a call from a ex-team member on my smartphone. What's up? It's terrible. Please come back, Mr. Watson. Apparently, since the day I left, calls from our contract companies had been non-stop. Firing him was a foolish move. The words from a client would eventually force the section chief to bow deeply to me. My name is Benjamin Watson. I lost my father to illness when I was a child. I'm sorry for always making you feel lonely. It's okay, Mom. With no relatives nearby, my mom raised me all by herself. Growing up watching my mom work from dawn till dusk, I wanted to do whatever I could to lighten her load. Mom, I'm going to work as soon as I finish high school. I'm sorry, I've only caused you hardships. It's okay, just leave it to me. Despite saying that, finding a job right out of high school was tough. I couldn't pass the initial screenings and couldn't even make it to an interview. I was unemployed for about a month. But when I kept sending out resumes everywhere, only one company passed me through the screening. It was a sales position at an insurance company. Anxiety crossed my mind. I'd heard that working for an insurance company was demanding, with strict quotas. However, my desire to secure a job and reassure my mom was stronger. 
I headed to the interview, determined to get the job. Whether they recognized my enthusiasm or they were simply short on staff, I was hired on the spot. Fast forward 35 years, I'm still working on the front lines as a salesperson, handling corporate clients. My monthly sales just barely meet the quota, and I'm completely off the promotion track. But perhaps my original diligent character is still alive. I've earned the trust of my clients with my polite service. I want to ask about this insurance, is that okay? Then, may I visit you this afternoon? Sure, I appreciate it. Even on my days off, if someone called, I would head to them. My sole intention was to alleviate their concerns as much as possible. Mr. Watson, are you taking enough time off? Huh. Well, yeah. You say that, but you're probably not, right? It's unfair that clients have days off, but it seems like salespeople don't. But not knowing things can be unsettling, so it can't be helped. The workload increased, but I wanted to work for the sake of others. Working like this, I often receive words of gratitude, which fuels me. It's a great help that you come right away when I call, thank you. No problem, call me anytime. However, my work style was disliked by one of my boss. Selling such cheap insurance, you must be quite proud of yourself. Proud? I didn't mean to, but every insurance policy is important when you consider the client's needs. I responded confidently to Section Chief Howard, who didn't bother to hide his disdain. Section Chief Howard is a boss who was recently transferred from headquarters to our sales department. Unlike me, a high school graduate, He's an elite who graduated from a well-known university, and apparently, big expectations were placed on him from the head office. You can tell by the fact that he's been made a section chief, nearly 20 years younger than me. Are you feeling superior just because you've been working for over 30 years and still haven't been promoted? From section chief Howard's point of view, it seemed I was incompetent. In fact, looking at my sales quota, I couldn't argue. Since you're my team member, I'm in trouble if you don't bring in solid numbers. It seemed that Section Chief Howard was aiming for further promotion using this position as a stepping stone, and he was quite enthusiastic. Although that in itself isn't bad, I just couldn't bring myself to follow his directives. Listen up, you guys! Selling cheap products to small businesses doesn't make a profit. Target the big fish, sell them our best, proudest products. Section Chief Howard rallied the young salesmen and sent them out. Section Chief Howard's policy was to sell the best insurance to large accounts. In other words, to push the product with the highest premiums. I didn't like this approach. The insurance that Section Chief Howard was pushing covered various things and could fully prepare for any contingency. However, the higher the coverage, the higher the cost, which I didn't find conscientious. Insurance for any eventuality should not become a daily burden. Moreover, it included insurance that the client might not really need. Section Chief Howard said things like, Consider the maximum possible occurrence. Stir up anxiety and make them feel the need for insurance. This is a sales skill. But to me, that's a ridiculous idea. I value providing insurance that suits each company, regardless of their size, by listening to each one. Because of this, it takes time, and I end up working late every day, but it's necessary to get their understanding. Section Chief Howard disregarded this. Your way of working is really inefficient. Sell more quickly and earn more. <laughs> Sorry. While apologizing, I ignored Section Chief Howard and I continued my way. Even though I was going against my boss, I couldn't confidently say that my way was absolutely right. Are you listening to me? Huh? What did you say? I had been neglecting my time with my family. Coming home late every night, I had almost no time with them. Exhausted from work, I was always inattentive to what my wife said. I just want to spend more time with you. I'm sorry, I'm just tired from work. On your days off, you should really rest. I'm worried about your health. My wife was unhappy about the limited time we spent as a family. Even though I was supposed to be working for my family, they were voicing their dissatisfaction. Is this really okay? I was constantly questioning myself. 
And then my way of doing things hit a wall. Oh my, oh my, you couldn't meet your quota. I'm very sorry. I couldn't meet this month's quota. Section Chief Howard took this opportunity to scold me as I desperately apologized. Mr. Watson, do you think you can make up for it next month? Well, that's... If the quota isn't met, the shortfall for this month must be added to next month's. As I'm barely meeting the quota as it is, the possibility of making it seemed incredibly low. If you can't, maybe you should consider becoming part-time? Part-time? Can there really be a part-time salesman? While I was confused, Section Chief Howard smirked. If you don't want that, then you're fired. I was declared fired. Fired. However, when I said it out loud for some reason, the word went down easily. I can't say I have no regrets about my current job, but haven't I been working hard, even cutting into my family time? I thought it might be good to accept being fired and treasure the family time I hadn't had until now. I pictured my wife's face. Understood, I'll resign. Oh my, really quitting? It's going to be tough for an old man like you to lose your job. Section Chief Howard continued to say things, but I bowed my head and returned to my seat. Having worked here for a long time since graduating high school, I would probably have to hand over my tasks. I started the process of resigning. That day, unusually, I came home on time. When I opened the front door, my wife, with a surprised look on her face, greeted me. At first she looked puzzled, but then she broke into a smile. You're home early today. Dinner isn't ready yet. Could you wait a bit? Ah, thank you. This might have been the first time I really watched my wife cooking since we got married. I realized how much of my time had been consumed by work. Well, I've decided to quit my job. I see. My wife didn't ask for details when I told her I was resigning. The next day, I submitted my resignation to Section Chief Howard. He had a broad smile on his face. It seems like he was pleased. Please, get the handover done quickly. Understood. I cleaned up my desk and explained my responsibilities to the person taking over. Until I quit, I visited clients together with my replacement. What? Mr. Watson, you're quitting? Yes, well, there were many clients who tried to persuade me to stay, but I politely said my goodbyes. And then a month later, I left the company. Leaving the company I'd worked at for so long was sad, but my heart felt light. My wife seemed to be in a good mood, even though I was now unemployed. You're not worried, even though I'm unemployed? Not at all. I was more worried that you were working too hard and might collapse one day. My wife had always been worried about me. I had been working so much that I made her worry. Why not? You've worked hard up to now. It's okay to take a break. Right. Thanks for always worrying about me. How about we go on a trip? We have plenty of time now. That sounds great. Let's go to a hot spring to heal from years of exhaustion. My wife was very happy when I invited her on a trip. So, the next day, we quickly set off on a hot spring trip. However, while I was relaxing with my wife on the trip, I got a call on my smartphone from an ex-team member. What's up? It's terrible! Mr. Watson, please come back! I was surprised at my ex-team member's panic, but I asked him to explain. He said that since the day I quit, the company has been getting non-stop calls from our contract partners. They all said they wanted to cancel the contract now that I've quit. So many calls were coming in that it was interfering with their regular work. Not just the calls, but if all these contracts are canceled at once, it will be a huge issue for the company. Can't you please come back? I won't be coming back. W what? Deal with each company sincerely and carefully. That's it. My ex-team member was still talking, but I hung up and turned off my smartphone. My wife, who had been watching the exchange, looked puzzled. What happened? My ex-team member asked me to come back. So they realized how amazing you were after you left, huh? <laughs> my wife was in a good mood after hearing the story. Although I missed my work, if I went back, I wouldn't be able to see my wife's face like this. 
I decided not to return to work, for my wife's sake as well, seeing an expression she didn't show while I was working. After that, I blocked out the calls from my ex-team member and enjoyed the trip. While out for a walk, my wife invited me to an old-style cafe. This is a nice place, isn't it? I've always wanted to come here. You know your cafes. At my words, my wife looked a little sad. I wondered if I said something strange. You know, visiting cafes is my hobby. Oh, I didn't know that. Indeed, cafes are fashionable and have cute food, so I'm sure many women like them. I'm actually a certified barista. Did you know? What? That's amazing. I've mentioned before that visiting cafes is my hobby and about my certification. The tone of my wife's voice dropped and I hurriedly bowed my head. When I was working, I was tired and didn't really listen to my wife's stories. Well, it's okay. When we get home, I'll make you some of my special coffee. True to her word, when we returned from the trip, my wife made me coffee. It was completely different from the instant coffee I usually had. Delicious! I can't believe I can drink this at home. I'll make it for you anytime. From then on, my day began with the coffee my wife brewed for me every morning. Spending more time with my family, I found there were many things I didn't know. While regretting that I had neglected my family until now, I decided to cherish my time with my wife. A few days later, I received a call from Chief Howard. I hesitated whether to answer, but considering the recent situation with my ex-team member, I pressed the call button. Mr. Watson, I was wrong. I'm sorry. Could you please come back? Chief Howard apologized to me and asked me to return to the company. After I quit, it seems that Chief Howard had to deal with the endless calls from our contract partners. He had visited our partners and apologized. Mr. Watson was always kind and considerate. Amidst the many people trying to push insurance, he was a rare breed these days. Chief Howard had heard from our partners how much they appreciated me. This wasn't just one or two companies, it was the same everywhere he went. Firing him was a foolish move. Strongly criticized, Chief Howard seemed to have deeply realized that his sales approach was wrong. Hearing the words of the customers conveyed by Chief Howard, I felt warmth in my chest. I was wrong. What the customers really needed was considerate service. You are good at observing customers. I want to learn the job from scratch, under you. Chief Howard was desperate. His tone had none of the condescending attitude from before. I'm really grateful that you'd say that, but I'm not coming back. W what? If you think you were wrong, then reflect on it and treat your customers right. There's no need for me to return. But I found a new job. My words left Chief Howard breathless, which was evident even over the phone. After a brief silence, he said, I see. There's nothing we can do then. Chief Howard sounded disappointed. Then he apologized to me and hung up. While I do worry about the company I used to work for, I'm excited about starting something new. No matter how old you get, starting something new is nerve-wracking, but I'll be okay if I'm with my wife. Welcome! Together with my wife, we opened a small cafe. When I was jobless, my wife shared a little dream with me. I want to work in a cafe I love while enjoying a relaxed life in my old age. So taking my resignation as an opportunity, we decided to chase my wife's dream together. The customers were mostly my wife's friends at first, but word spread and now our business is quite thriving. With my experience in sales, I was good at serving customers. My wife enjoyed chatting with her friends while working and always seemed happy. Welcome! Uh, Mr. Watson? As I greeted a customer as usual, to my surprise, it was Chief Howard. Chief Howard widened his eyes when he saw me. I couldn't help but give a wry smile and led him to an open seat. Is this your new job? Yes, I started it with my wife. It seemed Chief Howard was in the middle of business. Probably, he had some downtime and decided to stop by the cafe. He didn't used to visit sites much before, but it seems he's been back on the field since that incident. You look very happy now, Mr. Watson. Do I? Yes. After all, you always looked tired when you were at the company. Come to think of it, he might be right. 
I had felt guilty about not being able to spend time with my wife. Now, I'm enjoying my work while spending time with my wife. You seem to be having fun, too. He seems more lively than before. I'm training to be like you, Mr. Watson. You're my goal. Chief Howard said this and then checked his watch and stood up. I'll bring everyone from work next time. Thank you for the meal. Chief Howard, who said this and left the cafe, seemed light on his feet. From here on, Chief Howard is likely to grow even more. Honey, I made coffee. Okay, thank you. After closing the cafe, we sit side by side at the counter, sipping the coffee my wife brewed. Today was another busy day, but it was fun. Sitting at the counter with my wife, we talk about the day's work. This moment feels calm and precious. All of this is thanks to my wife. Thank you for everything. Why so formal all of a sudden? I decide to cherish these moments of laughter with my wife from now on. My husband is cheating on me. Apparently, he's been showering his mistress with designer goods. What's more, he used my credit card for these extravagant purchases. I've put up with it for our son's sake, but I've reached my limit. I can't forgive this. I have to do something. The one who came to my aid was the last person I expected. My name is Flora, 35 years old. I've been married to Adam for 10 years. Our beloved son Dominic turned eight this year. Always having loved reading, I'm now living my dream as a novelist, my chosen career. My mystery series gained a significant following, allowing me to secure several monthly serials. Thankfully, my standalone books are also selling well, keeping me busy every day. Initially, my husband had a job, but the moment I started earning, he quit. For the last two or three years, he's mostly lounged around at home, occasionally going out to play pachinko. Yet today, unusually, he's changed into a suit. Something's not right. Why the suit? I decided to boldly ask my husband. Adam, it's rare to see you in a suit. Where are you going? My husband's eyes widened in surprise, but he quickly returned to his usual tone and said, a job interview. A job interview? For what? Well, it's obviously for a job, right? I thought it might be time for me to start working again. I see. Good luck. Yeah, I'm off. At that moment, I genuinely believed he was going for a job interview. I thought that with our son still so young, he had reconsidered his priorities for the future. However, my husband didn't return home until 1 a.m. that night. I happened to be awake because of a looming deadline. Reeking of alcohol and perfume, he fell asleep on the living room sofa. In his hand was a smartphone, unlocked. Out of sheer curiosity, I peeked at my husband's phone. What? What is this? I can't believe this! To cut to the chase, my husband was cheating on me. What's more shocking, his affair was with my best friend, Delphine. It seemed like they had been to a fancy restaurant with a beautiful night view that day. The shock was like a dull blow. It was too much. How could Adam cheat on me with Delphine? Why? Doesn't Delphine have a husband too? I trusted them both. The unexpected reality hit me and tears welled up in my eyes. Knowing I shouldn't wake my husband, I stifled my sobs. Evidence. Yes, evidence. For now, I sent the evidence of the affair to my own phone and decided to think about the next steps. The next morning, I casually asked my husband, who was acting as usual, Hey, Adam, about yesterday... Yesterday? You know, you said you had an interview, but you came home late. I was just wondering what happened. Then my husband averted his eyes, showing signs of thinking up an excuse. Actually, I ran into a friend after the interview. We ended up going for a drink. A friend? Who? Some guy you don't know, Flora. Do I need to explain everything? Yeah, you're right. As expected, my husband concealed the fact that he had met with Delphine. His affair was clear from this attitude as well. One month after discovering my husband's infidelity, I was still lost in confusion. Until now, I hadn't confronted my husband about the fact he was cheating. Once I bring it up, 
it's clear that a crack would form in our relationship. If I was alone, I would have confronted him with the evidence of his affair and divorced him right away. The only reason I didn't divorce him was for our son, Dominic. I couldn't bring myself to take his father away from him at the tender age of eight. Afterwards, my husband started going out frequently, taking advantage of me being busy with work in my room. However, this was also an excellent opportunity. While he was out, I decided to gather evidence of his infidelity. What I found in his room were several unfamiliar receipts. Apparently, he had been buying women's designer items. But there was nothing like that in his room. And of course, I hadn't received anything. There was only one conclusion I could reach. Adam, you've been lavishing Delphine with designer items. But where did he get the money for that? He's jobless now and living off the allowance I give him every month. There's likely no savings left. Concerned, I decided to follow him. During that time, I would call my brother over to watch over Dominic. Of course, my brother didn't know about my husband's affair. I lied to my brother. Bro, sorry for calling you out of the blue. Nah, it's fine. But what's up? Suddenly asking me to look after Dominic? Actually... I really want to go shopping alone. Shopping? You've never been much of a materialist. Don't you usually shop online? Well, that's true. But today, I want to buy something that's only available in the store. So, can you please look after Dominic? Well, alright. But don't be too late, okay? Dominic gets lonely. Yeah, thank you. Thus, with my brother's cooperation, I successfully managed to tail my husband. Right now, he's walking arm in arm with my best friend, Delphine. I knew it was happening, but seeing it with my own eyes was a shock. The two of them cheerfully entering a high-end designer store. And then I saw something outrageous. No way! Is that my credit card? Indeed, the card my husband used to pay the bill was my secondary credit card. I always keep my main card in my wallet, but the secondary one was left in a drawer. He took it without my knowledge and used it to fund his gifts. Over the past few months, I've been buying new work tools like monitors and keyboards and even new furniture, so the amount on the credit card has skyrocketed. Both cards are linked to the same bank account, and because I've been busy recently, I haven't checked the details carefully. This came back to bite me. I can't believe it. Not only was he cheating on me, but he was also freely using my money. Any love I had for my husband had completely cooled off. Of course, I was at fault for not noticing, but I still couldn't forgive him. I took clear pictures of the two of them in the act and returned home. For the next few days, I was engrossed in thinking about how to get back at my husband. I checked his usual use computer multiple times when he wasn't around. Since he syncs his smartphone and computer, I can easily check his and Delphine's exchanges on the computer. Soon, I found out that the two of them were going on a trip during the upcoming long weekend. A four-day, three-night trip to Okinawa. Yep, this is my only chance. I decided to execute my revenge plan to coincide with my husband's affair trip. But there was one problem. That was the presence of my son. It would be difficult to carry out this plan without my son finding out about his father's infidelity. I decided to rely on my brother's help again. Hey, bro, sorry to ask again, but could you look after Dominic for me during the upcoming long weekend? You mean for the entire four days? Yeah, I have something I need to do. Something to do? Huh. He says with a meaningful tone. Just as I was feeling uneasy about my brother's attitude, he firmly said this, Flora, stop trying to handle everything on your own. Bro? Adam's cheating on you, isn't he? What? How did you know? I heard it from Dominic. Huh? Dominic? Even though he was still a child, my son had noticed his father's infidelity. I don't know if he understood the concept of infidelity, but he knew that his father was becoming close with someone who wasn't his mother, and that this was causing his mother pain. It seemed that Dominic, in his own childlike way, had noticed this. But I thought I was hiding it well from Dominic. How? 
It means Adam has hurt you so much that even Dominic could see it. Are you still planning to be with a man like that? But if I divorce Adam, Dominic will be upset. As soon as I muttered this, my son, who was supposed to be in the next room, appeared. It's okay, Mom. I'm on your side. Uh, Dominic, are you sure? I don't need someone who makes Mom sad. As long as I have Mom, I'm okay. <laughs> thank you, Dominic. And thank you too, bro. And so, thanks to my son and brother, I was able to make up my mind to get revenge on my husband without any hesitation. We started moving to a new place on the day my husband was leaving for his affair trip. My brother helped us, and we secretly packed when my husband was away. Then, on the night before the long weekend, I decided to give my husband one last chance. I asked him, who was excited about his trip starting tomorrow, straight to the point. Adam, what's with the luggage? Why are you preparing a suitcase? Oh, this? Actually, I'm going on a trip with a friend from tomorrow. A trip? Did you mention anything about that? It's a sudden decision. Who cares? I'm going with the budget of the monthly allowance I get. Wanting to avoid further questions, my husband was emitting a don't talk to me anymore aura, but I couldn't care less about his situation. I questioned my husband in a voice lower than I've ever used before. Hey, is it really with a friend? My husband was visibly shaken, his shoulders twitching. Still, he desperately lied. Of course! You've been nagging me! I see. That's nice. A trip with a friend. Have fun. I was gonna have fun even if you didn't tell me to. Well, just don't get too carried away, okay? Leaving those words, I exited my husband's room. Honestly, if he had confessed the truth here, I was considering just asking for alimony and child support and settling things amicably. Even though he cheated on me, he was someone I once loved. When my novel didn't sell... It was because of him that I could keep going. I didn't want to hate him or resent him from the bottom of my heart. However, I can't afford to be so composed after what he's done. For the sake of my son and for my future, I have to put an end to my relationship with that man. There's no need to hold back any longer for a man who keeps lying. The next early morning, my husband had already left for his trip. I opened the drawer and confirmed that he had taken my credit card as usual. I immediately contacted the credit card company, reported the loss of the card, and requested a stop to its use. My son woke up, and I greeted him. Good morning! He responded with a wide smile. Mom! It's today, right? Huh? The moon! We're going to our new home today, right? Seeing my son's sparkling eyes, the last bit of anxiety I had disappeared. <laughs> oh, Dominic. All right, I've stopped the credit card. Let's move to our new home. Yeah, that's right! I'm excited for our new home! With my brother's help, our move went smoothly. My son and I moved our things to the new house, and my husband's things were sent off to a certain place. The next day, while relaxing at the new house with my son and brother, I received a call from my husband. Hello? Uh, is that you, Flora? Do you need something? Well, actually, I've ended up spending more than I thought, could you transfer me just a little bit? He probably couldn't use the card because I'd suspended it and was having trouble paying for things on his trip. He was asking for money indirectly without mentioning the card, which was disgusting. You said you were going to stay within your allowance, right? Sorry, but I can't afford to lend you anything. Don't say that. I can't enjoy the trip alone if you do that. Alone? Don't you mean for two? At that question, my husband let out a dumbfounded, Huh? You wanted to show Delphine the sights on your trip, right? But too bad. The card you took is no longer usable, so give it up. What are you talking about, Flora? Who's Delphine? What about the card? It's useless to feign ignorance. Actually, you're too flustered. It's because you're saying things I don't understand. I don't know anything about the card. That's enough. It's already out that you cheated on me with my best friend Delphine. Huh? Did you actually think it wasn't exposed? Are you stupid? It's so obvious. No, this isn't what it looks like. It's not cheating. I was extremely angry at my husband, who was still trying to make excuses. Not caring that my brother and son were around, I let out all the anger I'd been holding in. 
Don't make excuses. You had a family, but you had an affair with another woman. And you even used someone else's card. Do you realize how low you've sunk? Yeah, uh, Flora. Let's calm down. Calm down? How am I supposed to stay calm when dealing with the person I hate most in the world? Let me tell you, I have no intention of forgiving or helping you. I hope you and that woman you cheated with fall straight to hell. Don't you dare show your face in front of me and Dominic ever again. I unilaterally hung up on my husband. Then I got a call from Delphine, the woman he cheated with. What the heck, Flora? What have you done? Ah, Delphine. Long time no see. How's the trip with your best friend's husband? Shut up! Explain yourself first! What are you talking about? Don't play dumb! You, you sent Adam's stuff to my house, didn't you? Indeed. During the move, I had sent my husband's belongings to Delphine's house, the woman he had an affair with. Since Delphine was married, her husband was naturally at home. That's why I purposely sent all of Adam's belongings to her husband. I included a long letter explaining the situation and yelled at her over the phone, almost cracking the speaker. Are you kidding me? What have you done? My husband found out and he's furious. Isn't that natural? You're having an affair even though you're married. To think my best friend would do such a dirty thing. You're the worst. I am so disappointed. Excuse me? I think that's my line. My best friend was cheating with my husband. You think I would forgive that? Who was the one who did the disrespectful thing first, even though we were best friends? Uh, I wasn't serious. It was just a fling. There's no way I would settle for a jobless loser like him. Whether you were serious or not is none of my business. I'm getting a divorce soon, too. Either way, the fact that you had an affair is true. I will never forgive you. I'll demand the maximum amount of compensation, so be prepared. C compensation? What? I didn't hear anything about that. Isn't it natural? You did something worthy of it. W wait, I'm a housewife. I can't pay compensation. I don't care. You can figure it out yourself. Or maybe beg your husband? Although, I guess that's unlikely. Wait a minute! Flora! Hey! Wait! Goodbye. I hung up the phone without letting her speak and blocked her contact. After that, I finalized the divorce through a lawyer and demanded compensation from my ex-husband and Delphine. I demanded child support plus the amount he spent on the card without permission. Delphine, burdened with debt from paying the compensation, was served divorce papers by her husband and was apparently kicked out of their house. He tried to rely on his family home, but the circumstances were what they were. After being swiftly turned away, he's apparently now living in and working the night shift. He tried to rely on her, but she flipped out, blaming him for ending up getting divorced. She quickly cut off ties with him, and their relationship naturally fizzled out. As for my ex-husband, I hear he's now juggling several part-time jobs and just scraping by day to day. For someone who's been unemployed for a long time, finding a decent job won't be easy. Of course, if he ever falls behind on the compensation or child support payments, I'm determined to collect it by any means necessary. As for me, my son and I are living a peaceful life in our new home. My son is growing up so fast, and every day is truly fresh and exciting. I hope to continue pouring a lot of love into him without causing him any sadness.